excited to be here. This outreach program has been something that um, I have put a lot of energy into. A lot of our volunteers have, but uh, heading it up has been pretty proud for me. So this is my basement. <laughs> and it's about twice as big as that. And there's twice as much shelving as what you can see in that picture. Uh, this is where we keep a lot of our supplies that um, are need temperature control. And now I would say there's these shelves, these shelves here are three feet wide, 16 feet long, and there's 30 of those. So if you can imagine each one of those holds up to 2,000 pounds of toys and treats and food, we can accommodate quite a bit. We use up just about 1,500 square feet of space for storage for all of our supplies. So the PATH project wanted to bridge uh, between all the different rescues and welfare groups that uh, needed us or wanted us. When we first started, we weren't sure who really actually wanted the service even, or if it was just gonna be a duplication or um, something that people would rather do on their own in their groups. So it was, uh, the intent was to focus on the groups in Regina first, in our, in our home area, and then as we had excess supplies, we would circle outward and help those in surrounding communities and further if we had those available resources. We um, help a couple of organizations that are just along the border of Manitoba. So far, none in Alberta. Um, our outreach program has been very successful to date. Um, so we find that we've been able to expand our reach even, um, obviously we're gonna talk in the fires, but all the way up to La Ronge now and La Loche where there's a spay and neuter clinic happening uh, in a couple weeks and we'll send supplies up for that. I think one of the nice things about bridging that gap is not only have we collected and distribute supplies, but we've also been being able to redistribute the supplies which other groups have received in excess. I was just talking to John and we were talking about sometimes you get a donation of 600 collars. So you need maybe 50 or 100, so what do you do with those other 500 and how can they get to everybody efficiently? So we have an outreach coordinator and a team of six volunteers who liaison with the animal welfare groups in the entire province. So what they do, uh, they're called um, uh, rescue care representatives. So these six volunteers take under them um, anywhere between three and five organizations in the province. So and they are the main point of contact for those rescues or those humane societies to help keep things in a nice smooth flowing pattern. So these volunteers, they make calls, they make contact, they follow up. They also collect supplies from other sources. So whether it's um, the big log laws distribution center is in Regina. So they're a huge source of our supplies because they have very, a ton of damaged goods from the forklifts driving around. So this is a distribution center that supplies all the superstores from the Great Lakes all the way through the Northwest Territories all the way out to Vancouver Island. So you can imagine it's the size of 20 football fields, it's huge. So we have, um, we have regular outreach uh, work parties every single Sunday. And it's really neat, some Sundays we have people from different organizations that come down and they just wanna come help. So we have it every Sunday from two to 5 p.m. every single week except Christmas. So, and uh, during these parties our volunteers have some, uh, sorry. It's on the next slide. I got ahead of myself. Oh no, we're gonna talk about funding. So let's talk about funding. So, sorry guys. So despite our best fundraising efforts, we found that there's a cost to running this program. Those shelving units you saw, they're hundreds of dollars, but you really need them in order to keep things organized when you're dealing with this much quantity. We might not have a lot of quantity one day, However, the next day we could get in 10 pallets. So what do you do with that to keep it so it's safe and rodent free for all the rescues to then get? 
So um, we need also shelving, we need boxes and tape and pens and all kinds of things, gloves. So to make the program financially sustainable, what we did was we contacted each of the animal welfare groups that we'd been helping for the first few months to see how they liked it, if they wanted to continue, and also we wanted to see if they would be willing to contribute financially to the program, like a cooperative, so that we could all share in the costs. So we would do all the work, and then we needed some help with the rest of the uh, with the rest of the supplies that we needed to use. So we did. We contacted each of them, and they were able to uh, determine from their own their own perspective how much do they want to use the program, how much do they want to contribute towards it monthly. It's the same amount for a whole year, so we know we can depend on it. And if they needed um, extra supplies or something like that, it wasn't based on what they were using the whole time. They can have as much as they need. But having that extra bit of funds come in from 20 organizations really helps us to be able to do better work. So we spoke with our suppliers that we had to make sure that they were okay with this as well, uh, because some sources you need to make sure, right? They, uh, if you receive funding from people, it can look like they're paying for food, which is not the case. They're paying to help us distribute the food. So many programs saw the value in this, and they were more than willing to participate. How many did you have? How many organizations? Yeah. Uh, what did you say? 120? 20. Yeah, so there's 20. That's quite a lot. And that doesn't include the groups that go up on a one-time trip to um, a reservation to go do a targeted spay neuter clinic that need 2,000 pounds of food and a whole bunch of towels and blankets. So there's people that are kind of outside that but still utilize it. So how do you keep it all organized? <laughs> we made a form. So this form, I, I know it's probably difficult to see, so I'll tell you what's on it. So at the top, it goes through and it lists dog food, puppy food, cat food, kitten, um, large kennels, large, medium, extra large, uh, toys, treats, harnesses, leashes, collars, pee pads, everything you can imagine you need for a dog. And on there, what the rescue group that uh, participates in the program would do, like Michelle, that knows battle birds, she'll complete this form and she'll say she needs 400 pounds of dog food, she needs 30 collars, she needs three large kennels, and 100 pee pads, whatever she needs. And she'll fill it out and she'll send it to our rescue care rep at the PAC project. And on those Sunday work parties, we'll fill this order and get it ready to ship out. And they deliver it right to our shelter. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we, seem to, we seem to have had a lot of luck. And people have been so wonderfully kind. It's been actually quite humbling with those that, um, when we post that we need somebody to transport, there's so many people that step forward and say, I can do that, that's no problem. A lot of people can't transport dogs, but they're more than happy to transport food. So once a month, in order to keep our sanity, we inventory everything that we have. So all of our, all of our organizations that participate in this program, all of our rescue care reps are on a closed Facebook group, and that's where we post this information to them. So each month we inventory everything and we'll post this. So they have a concept of if we only have 3,000 pounds of food, they're probably not gonna order 1,000. So they know what's there for everybody to share. Um, so, and if there's something that's not available on there, we really like our rescue partners to let us know to see if we can source out that item for them. So, Next few slides we have of some pictures of just of donations that we've received. But I can tell you, I probably didn't have time to take pictures of some of the bigger donations because I was too busy unloading pallets and just missed it. So we get things like antlers and uh, here this is PetSmart does huge food drives with uh, canned food and that's both PetSmart, Saskatoon and uh, Regina. And if anybody needs milk bones, we have about a 10 year supply of milk bones for the entire province. <laughs> Everybody gives us milk bones. All right. So here's, where, where's Waldo? So that's my poor child. 
And this is a Durango <laughs> film. And there was no airspace left in there, so just make sure he wouldn't get uh, decapitated by pig's ears, and then we were good to go. <laughs> So this is, oh, these are the ladies at Petland. They're really good. Um, Petland and a few others are really good about donating uh, um, expired supplies of food, which are still more than good. And then uh, here, canned food. We have canned food coming out the kazoo. Anybody? So we d <laughs> it's something, you know, there's certain things in rescue that aren't used as much as others, and so we end up with this backlog of it. So, but, uh, this year we have tons, we get a lot of medical food and special diet food and things like that, which are, that's something that costs rescues a lot of money when they have to put their animals on that. So having that available for them is fantastic. This was actually one of our very, very first donations we ever sent out. I think it's our second donation. <laughs> and we sent it out to um, Hillside Canine Fosters and that lady does uh, puppy whelping and that's all she does all day, three litters of puppies in three separate units. I don't know how she does it. She's a pretty amazing lady. Oh, okay, so here's the garage before we got a whole pile of shelving in it. And uh, as you can see, pallets and pallets and pallets. It all looks very nice and organized now. <laughs> so here's another project we took on. Um, Canine Action Project was doing um, some targeted housing programs for animals for dogs last year in the like, Minnesota area. And uh, so what they did was they posted on their website they wanted people to uh, buy a home for the holidays for the dogs. And so our volunteers built the dog houses for them and they collected that $150 donation which covered the supplies to build them. So we did that project and I think we did 25 dog houses. Are we doing more? <laughs> Are we doing more? <laughs> <Are they? laughs> I know that this one, uh, this particular one right here, which is huge, um, is uh, going to be on Canine Action Project's um, website for auction. It weighs about 400 pounds. It took six of us to move it. I don't think anyone would run away with it. So this... So this next slide is, uh, is, is something, Nicole is our media gal, the one in the purple shirt, and uh, she's just got a way with, uh, with putting together things that they're just so visually um, attractive. And I was so proud when this one came out because it was our very first, um, our, our very first post that we kind of did that showed the collective of the people that we worked with for the first six months that we were in operation. So, um, the, one of the first things, that, one of our values mentioned at the start was transparency. We felt that it was important that our supporters knew where their donations were going, and then this is what Nicole came up with. Behind the scenes, we track everything. We track absolutely everything. So, each, uh, each week, uh, we have a spreadsheet done with all the donations coming in. We know who gave us, so if North Battleford sent us 500 pounds of food, that's down, and we took that food and we sent it out to John at PA, then it would be down there so we can track exactly what's coming in and what's going out and who it's going to and who it came from, because that's especially important. So this wonderful infographic was put together by Nicole, and uh, it really kind of gives a good visual on how this is all working. Next one is one we do. So this was at the end of the year, but this next one we put up every month. And it's again, probably really hard for you to read. So this is the month of June this year. So what it says in the top left is we sent out 1,055 pounds of cat food, 3,150 pounds of dog food, 800, just over 800 packages of treats, 500 pounds of litter, 80 dog toys, um, 738 cans of food, so um, 120 pounds of medical food, 10 leashes, 39 collars, so, it did, but it gives a really good visual each month so people can see what we've done. And then there is our entire list of all the people that we have um, worked with through our outreach program. Um, 
giving them supplies or food at one time or more um, since we started. There's quite a few on that list. So these are, oh, these are all our thank yous. I just want to say this program is a lot of fun. So if you're in the Regina area and you want to come check it out, you certainly can any Sunday from 2 to 5. Now the wildfires. Say